Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This week's project is a little different than usual because it's not Star Wars, Halloween, or Haunted Mansion, although some might say it's Haunted Mansion adjacent. What I'm talking about is the Tower of Terror, and more specifically, the dial above the service elevator entry doors as you get onto the ride. It's always been a favorite piece of mine, and after finding a great 3D model online, I thought now is as good a time as any to make a replica for my collection. So let's get to it. I started off the project by heading over to Thingiverse and downloading the 3D model by HR Jr. I'll link to the file in the video description if you want to make one for yourself. After I downloaded the files, I printed them out on my 3D printer and started sanding to get the prints ready for paint. Now I didn't film this part, but here's a dramatic reenactment for good measure. With all the parts sanded and primed, I cut the dial numbers out on my Glowforge and stuck them to a scrap piece of wood with double-sided carpet tape to keep them from moving while I paint them. And now that the parts are ready, it's time to lay down a green base color that I'm making with a 2 to 1 mix of turquoise and green acrylic paint. I chose this approach because the dial is supposed to look like it's copper, and when copper starts to weather it takes on a green color, and I'm using that tone to give my copper a greenish tint. After a quick mix of my paints, I thinned it out with a bit of window cleaner so that I can apply it with my airbrush. Once I have good coverage and the paint has had a chance to dry, I'll give it a satin clear coat to seal in the paint. When the clear coat is dried, it's time to break out the copper paint, which I'll be applying with an acid brush. But before I start painting, I like to work the brush back and forth to free up any loose bristles to keep them from ending up in my paint. The reason I chose an acid brush is because I'm going to be pouncing the copper paint onto the surface to create a mottled appearance that will allow the base layer to show through the copper paint. This approach just helps to give the paint job a bit more depth, and it's the kind of thing that you won't necessarily see, but helps to make it look more organic. As the painting goes along, you may notice the bristles will start to fan out a bit, which is good because it does two things. One, spreads out your paint more, and two, makes less of a pattern in your application. Once the dial frame and numbers have been painted and dried, I'm going to do a light pass with this aged bronze metallic spray paint. This was a small gamble since I just wanted to break up the copper color a bit more, but in the end it added some interesting speckling. I definitely thought this was a misstep at this point in the process, but in the end I'm glad I did it because it made it a bit more interesting. Next up, I decided to do a bit of dark weathering to get into the recesses of the frame. This was just to add a bit more character to the piece and to darken the rosette details that I wasn't able to reach with the acid brush.
Then it was time to bring back some of that copper color with a bit of rub and buff. I squeezed a bit out onto my work surface, got a small amount on my finger, and then dabbed it on the table to prevent big clumps when I applied it to the high spots of the dial. As I was finishing up the rub and buff, I realized that the overall tone of the dial was a bit too light. The reference photo I had shows a much darker, almost brown tone to the dial. So after getting up the nerve to do it, I grabbed a dark brown spray paint and dusted the entire piece to warm it up a bit and bring down the overall brightness of the paint. And then it was finally starting to look right to me. When all the paint had dried, it was time to do a bit of pale green weathering. So I grabbed this light jade color and mixed it with water and proceeded to spray down the entire surface. This helped to bring all of the colors together and really drive home the old metal look. It also gave me a chance to add some highlights by spraying in certain spots and letting gravity do the rest. The last thing to do was to apply just a little more rub and buff to help bring out the edge detail. It's really subtle, but when the light hits it, it looks great. And with the dial taken care of, it was time to power up the Glowforge once again and cut out the back panel. In the ride, this section is backlit. So I chose to do this out of white acrylic, which was painted off camera in a creamy yellow color to match my reference photo. And with the back panel installed, it was time to add in the floor numbers. I peeled them off the tape, checked my reference photo, and started applying them with a bit of CA glue. The last thing to do was to install the floor indicator. So I grabbed some VHB tape so that it's not permanent, but also won't go anywhere, centered up the indicator and stuck it in place. And just like that, we can call this project finished and just in the nick of time. Thanks for tuning in for another video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. Now I've got an elevator to catch. <laughs>